and error and fraud and all of those things are greater than ever. And this is why enforcement has been watered down tremendously over the last generation. And the other problem here is that uh, Don because of that uh, legislation as a result of pressure from Congress, a lot of really good people have bailed out of IRS. Right. It is not easy investigating taxes. It's a complex area. You need people who have uh, who are really familiar with what's going on out there. At the same time, more and more money has been moved offshore, which makes the job even more complex. And there are fewer and fewer and fewer agents with the skills needed to do this. This is another case where the Bush administration, uh, we all know how they sort of turned their back on the rest of the world and all kinds of foreign affairs issue. This is another example of where the Bush administration uh, went it alone, when most of the developed countries through the OECD, Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, sought to have a unified front on these offshore uh, bank accounts and, and avoidance and tax shelters. Uh, the Bush administration turned their back on them. And in fact, uh, many of the Republicans in Congress, Tom DeLay and Dick Armey, come to mind. Uh, basically uh, strongly and vigorously campaigned against the U.S. taking part in that initiative on the basis that that was a privacy matter and the U.S. didn't want any part of it. Once again, another message being sent by us, the U.S., uh, that avoidance, that uh, uh, weak enforcement, all of those things, all of those key areas where we need to be in this world uh, that we were not going to take part in. There's a, Jim used a key word there, privacy. That was used throughout the Bush administration really to conceal fraud, taxpayer exactly. fraud. Some of it's mistakes, some of, some of them, many of it's honest mistakes, but some of it is outright fraud. And they didn't want to prosecute it. Uh, last question on that point. Um, the Swiss giant bank UBS maintaining secret accounts. How does that fit into this story? Well, you, here again, you have these 19,000 accounts, you know, a trillion dollars, uh, and uh, there's still a part of this again is uh, the 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 lack of really sophisticated manpower in IRS uh, to go after this, and part of it is the, the secrecy laws in other countries uh, that uh, the Bush administration thumbed its nose at. I mean, the Internet has also contributed greatly to the democratization of, of tax fraud and avoidance. I mean, you can go online today and uh, open one of these Caribbean bank accounts in a way that 20 years ago you had to go to the Cayman Islands or the Bahamas or someplace like that and actually show up in person and do this. So all of these things have contributed to this. So IRS's job is, without a doubt, more difficult, more complex more demanding. And so rather than putting any uh, resources into that area to make sure that everybody drawing a paycheck in this country who's paying their fair share of taxes, uh, to make sure that those aren't subsidizing the fact that somebody who has a Caribbean bank account isn't, uh, we're not putting resources into that. Instead, we're, t we're acting like that's a privacy matter. It's not a privacy matter. It's a tax avoidance and fraud matter. And, and the, what's interesting is the ordinary person out there really gets it now as opposed to when we wrote about this 30 years ago. Uh, we've, we've been inundated with emails and calls from people as a result of the Daily Beast uh, article. And there was one in particular from a woman who said, it's been explained to me that they go after people like me, $20,000 annual income, because uh, they can pressure me. And, and for the higher income people, they've got to deal with tax lawyers. It's more expensive. It's more time consuming. And it just takes longer uh, to collect the money. And that's true. That's absolutely true. I want to ask you both to stay with us just after break. Then we will be joined by P.W. Singer, who wrote Wired for War, the Robotics Revolution and Conflict in the 21st Century. Stay with us. Your problems so we can be free. I'm not a hero. I'm not a savior. Forget what you know. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report, The Music by Styx, Mr. Roboto. And we're going to be speaking with P.W. Singer in a minute. But just back to Jim Steele and Don Barlett for one minute. The blog that you did, the piece, The Federal Reserve System for Healthcare, It's About Time. Jim Steele, just lay it out quickly. In our book on healthcare um, of uh, three or four years ago, and suggesting a solution as to how we could finally get universal care and single payer in the system. We said the politics of the problem are so fractious in Washington, 
the idea of a government agency per se is just it's just not politically feasible. So we suggested a quasi-government uh, agency like the Federal Reserve Board to be kind of an overseer of health care, uh, independent of each Congress, independent of each president, uh, that might serve as that overall body that, that could finally get us over the hump and provide the universal care that this country and people need. Uh, and, and we suggested this because this idea has been circulating. We did this several years ago, and now we've been gratified to see some of these ideas have actually been circulating in the Obama administration. It's hard to tell how the derailing of Daschle, uh, who was certainly going to be an advocate of this, uh, will, will factor into all of this. I want to thank you both for being with us, Jim Steele and Don Barlett, contributing editors at Vanity Fair, who've been writing about taxes for nearly four decades, have won two Pulitzer Prizes for their work. Their latest article appears at thedailybeast.com, why Geithner was worse than Dash.